the Sedona conference, uh, not last year, but the year before that. So I think it was 2017. And I was sitting in a class one day and I was having a hard time with, with the app that I was using. And it just happened to be Cosmic Insights. <laughs> and so he helped me through the class and I just, I found I learned really easily with him. And um, so I wanted to bring him on the channel. And uh, today we're gonna talk about a couple different things. Um, the first thing is going to be um, transit Jupiter because Jupiter just went into Sagittarius and how that's going to affect, you know, everyone um, and especially with the eclipse coming up at the end of this month on the 26th. It's going to be really intense. Um, so we're going to talk about that and then he's going to show us some simple techniques that you can use uh, with uh, uh, transits, you know, how to figure out the, these transits in your own chart. And we're going to talk about superimposing the Navamsha on top of the Rashi chart and how the transits uh, play with that, with the Dasha cycles and how it, he's just got some really great techniques. So now I'd like to open the floor to Sanfi. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Namaste, Katya. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Katya, for inviting me onto your channel. Uh, you know, I'm always happy to uh, you know uh, see students uh, or people who have associated with me share their knowledge and i'm always grateful to be part of that effort as well thanks again uh, for so we'll, we'll first talk about um, jupiter trans so, uh, no, no sure everyone must be feeling the effect of jupiter right now in sagittarius you know now there's a lot of uh, paradigm shift kind of thing going on uh, for many of us so remember, uh, we also have to remember with this particular Jupiter transit, uh, Jupiter is actually transiting along with Ketu as well as Saturn as well uh, for the first part of like until January 20th or so. And then, so that, that influence of Saturn is going to feel, make Jupiter restricted for a bit. But Jupiter in Sagittar is, is actually a great time for teachers in general. It's a great time. Sure, Saturn has been giving a hard time for teachers, counselors, and probably the finance industry, you know. Now, now Jupiter is also transiting with Ketu. So that's one, aside from that, you know, Jupiter is going to expand a lot of things. Now you will see a lot of uh, teachers coming out. You will see a lot of uh, universities kind of expanding their operations. You kind of see it's a great time period to understand a uh, lot of spirituality, philosophy. Lot more temples are going to be built up. Lot more church activities are going on. Things like that. Now, but at the same time, it's going to also expand your own thinking in many ways. Now, this will be a great time to pick up any, you know, because you'll you'll just absorb the knowledge very easily. Now, perhaps many of you have already been <laughs> to read books, you know, so that's also actually possible. Um, now, again, it's not just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see all... that stack. So now I can finally get into them. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, you'll see that actually people will begin to get into books and stuff like that. But remember, Sagittar is the natural ninth house of publishing as well. So, ninth house of the zodiac is connected with pilgrimages, with gurus, with spirituality, with long distance travel, foreign travel to foreign countries as well. We'll see all these themes will become very active for you. So, you'll see that most of now suddenly many people are actually beginning to think about traveling to foreign lands. Most of the, many of you are actually thinking about going back to school, you know, for your master's degree or even for your PhD. That kind of thing is very strong. Also with uh, one important thing about Jupiter being in Sagittarius, I have to emphasize this is that any kind of pilgrimages you do during this time, when Jupiter is in Sagittarius, that could be very powerful, very potent. So you go to any sacred sites, you go to any um, retreat centers, spiritual centers, stuff like that, temples, churches, you know, mosques even, any, you know, even tombs of uh, great saints and stuff like that. You'll find those um, places are actually a lot of blessings, a lot of energies will come your way. And also you will kind of forget, uh, so almost like a big shift has come your way, a big paradigm shifting, kind of energy has come your way as well. And you'll begin to feel that right now. And so this is a great year for doing any kind of pilgrimages. You know, this can include um, spiritual pilgrimages or what you would consider as a spiritual pilgrimage as well. Could be like for some people, just going and spending time in the nature is as spiritual as going to a temple. And that's completely fine. That's perfectly great as well. Now, one interesting thing you'll see with Mola um, uh, right now. Uh, so, so let me complete that uh, spiritual. You'll also see 
Jupiter in ninth house is also expand. Uh, you know, uh, in the natural ninth house of the zodiac, Sagittarius will also expand a lot of uh, writing and uh, publishing kind of works as well. Remember, I mentioned ninth house as being the natural house of publishing. So you'll find a lot of people writing books right now. This is a great time to write books. You know, if you have been you know, writing writing books, now is a great time. Feel that boost from Jupiter right now for sure. Um, the other Jupiter being in ninth house, it's a great time even to study a lot of fundamental spiritual concepts. Like it can mean that you might study with a guru, study even with uh, you might study some kind of uh, deeper spiritual principles. Now, what is interesting? is that Jupiter is actually transiting over Ketu right now. Now, what can happen because of this uh, transit is that, uh, you know, you might actually be studying some kind of um, subject to you, you already knew in your past lives. So it's like, it's almost this past life kind of knowledge coming back to you. Right. That's a very interesting point. Yeah. Uh, and what can happen is that uh, you might be interacting with, uh, you know, gurus from your past. It can actually happen as well. You know, you, you might be meeting teachers from your past. So it's like when you meet someone, meet, meet a teacher or suddenly you find yourself getting unexpected sources of inspiration. And you'll be surprised to find that, you know what, that person, you look at their chart, you look at your chart, you'll just find out that, you know, there was some kind of past life happening. And that's very really to see. So that's a very interesting thing. So this, and again, can also be extended to the idea that this is a great time to even look into your past life as well. So I recommended this to my clients as well. Uh, this is a great time to do past life regressions, things like that. You know, you'll find that your past life knowledge can come to the front right now. Now, it's not just past life knowledge. It can also be almost knowledge from a different dimension, you know, different uh, perspective, different world altogether. That kind of thing is very strong right now. And, uh, Jupiter being in uh, Sagittarius, what is also interesting, uh, this is a time when a lot of, uh, you know, a uh, lot of fundamental kind of uh, pulling out of uh, uh, your uh, unspiritual qualities will happen in your life. You'll, you'll begin to confront those people. You'll begin to confront the qualities those people reflect. And correspondingly, you know, some, it's very interesting with, because Jupiter will transit through three different nakshatras. The first nakshatra being Mula, actually the nakshatra associated with R. So you'll find that uh, you might be uprooting a lot of things about you. you be taking up things and throwing away. You might be even doing a spring cleaning early on. You know, that kind of thing could actually begin. I would be like um, Jupiter being in Mula now is also a great time period for gardening. Like you might suddenly find yourself dealing with crops, plants and stuff like that. And uh, one definite thing I can recommend uh, is that there is this uh, plant called um, as Hawaiian black turmeric. There's a, it's a, actually carrying a Mula Chitra energy. Now, what is very, really, very really interesting about um, Chitra energy is that it's actually connected with the uh, mother, mother energy, the sacred mother. You know, so that feminine kind of energy, that kind of rituals will be strong. You will see a lot of people getting into pre priestess traditions and priest traditions and stuff like that. You know, you'll begin to see that a lot of people getting into that. A lot of people getting initiated into those kind of traditions as well. Now, Mula is also having uh, this energy of dis past, distant past. So perhaps uh, you might find yourself uh, exploring historic sites. That's a very natural thing that can happen. You might come across very powerful uh, historical sites. Historical you know? sites. Ah. Yeah, historical sites. Yeah, so that's a big thing. Now, it's also a great time period when you might... Um, uh, it's a great time period to begin to make use of herbs as well, you know, because uh, Mula is also connected with plants, as I mentioned. So you might actually become uh, knowledgeable about certain herbs and you might actually able to use that to enhance yours as well. So the black turmeric is like a very magical kind of plant, you know. It's, you actually get the turmeric, um, I think they're called as stems, but you, you just you buy them and they're supposed to prevent any dark energy from entering into your house if you keep it. So actually people keep it in their walls and uh, in their wallets and stuff like that, you know, because that will attract more money as well. Black turmeric. So it's a black powder it, 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 instead of like, because turmeric no, it, is orange, right? Turmeric is orange, but uh, this particular turmeric is called as a black turmeric. So it's grown, uh, you get it in Hawaiian, uh, 
Hawaiian volcano, volcanic soil is where that kind of thing grows. And you can get these sprouts of uh, black turmeric and you can use that. And it's an actual, supposedly a magical kind of item, you know, that's kind of thing. So it's good, actually. That's something I can highly recommend. Um, now, Jupiter in Mola will definitely, you know, now you have to remember Mola is carrying this very powerful mother energy. So you might see a lot of females coming to the front. You know, very strong women coming into your life as well. Nice. Uh, you'll see. Yeah, that can, you'll see that playing out in a big way. Now, we do have, uh, I'll, I'll talk about Purvashada and, you know, Uttarashada also briefly before we actually touch about the eclipse, you know. Uh, I, I want you to also uh, share some thoughts at that point, Katya. You know, what, uh, now from Mula Nakshatra is actually considered as the Mula Trikon portion of Jupiter. It's considered to be where Jupiter uh, feels comfortable, you know, it's its own home, home, home uh, town. So it's very comfortable there. I find it's a great time period uh, for whatever Jupiter rules in your house, whatever Sagittarius is doing in your house. You'll find all those activities begin to move forward. Now, it's very important because it's Jupiter, right? You might need to make a big plan, big shift. You know? The story you need to be saying to yourself needs to be a bigger one. You know, there will be a need for a, what is the bigger story that is that you're trying to say. That kind of thing will become very strong. At the same time, you know, because Akshatra will carry this pulling out energy, uprooting energy, some of the story, uh, you know, might have to be pulled out also within yourself. That kind of energy will be very strong right now. Now, uh, Mula is also come to a disaster. So, again, I would also recommend anyone to get a DNA test right now because now is a great time because you might find out the story of your grandparents and stuff like that, you know, uh, coming out in a different way. And, uh, you know, so that's a great thing right now, getting, getting a DNA test, doing anything with past, like finding out more about your family history, making a family tree, all that kind of traditional kind of aspect. This is a great time so right now. Changing ancestral patterns. Yep, that's a great thing. Yep, exactly because that. Our DNA, you know, so much of our memory, especially, I mean, when I worked uh, or when I had a reading from Ganshyam at the, at the Birla Center, he said, oh, well, you know, a lot of what you think of as your past lives are actually DNA memories in your blood of your ancestors. And it's, you've got to use yep. discernment between which is you and which is them, yep. you know. Yep. And yep. a lot of the, the problems, I think, just basic personality problems that people have, a lot of it comes back to these, these patterns. That, and we literally have to break the patterns, you know. Yep. That's very important. K2 there, you know, I mean, that's yep. all thing, all of that's not necessary, you know, and especially with yep. our, um, I mean, Sagittarius is religion beliefs. And I just think the most, the most poignant thing about this whole time, you know, Jupiter was in SAD back in April, then went retrograde mm -hmm. and now is there again. Yep. But in April, the day that he went retrograde, he was at like almost one degree Sag. That's when the Cathedral of Notre Dame burned. I mean, it was like so yep. simple. Like it was so, you can't make this stuff up, you know? Like yep. it was yep. it. That was what was happening. The old is burning down and you have to, yep. in order to make room for the new, you have to, you know, clear space. You have to, you know, slash and burn and create an open area. And then the new can, because nature abhors a vacuum. So if you create a vacuum, then it comes in. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Now, what's what's really interesting uh, uh, is also Mula can also be considered as this black hole kind of energy, you know. Uh, and it was very interesting. We probably got to see the first black hole picture, you know, first image, first ever image of a black hole at that point. Well, uh, when Jupiter I, was in Mula. Controversy about what it really is. It's definitely um, a wormhole into another dimension. You know, I mean. Yeah, I've, definitely. Yeah. My husband's a physicist, so he, he, every time they talk about black holes on TV, he starts screaming. <laughs> there are yeah, no black holes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> because, you know, yeah, the definitely, you know, quantum physics field, you know, looks at it differently. But I think what it is, I mean, it's definitely a portal, you know, yeah. into another dimension. And like you were saying, um, that Surya isn't just the sun, it's that connection to the galactic center, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the black hole, uh, it's very interesting right now because, uh, you know, the black hole, you have to remember the Milky Way is actually having a black hole in its center. 
you know, and that black hole is what is actually driving the entire mind. So there's a lot of mystery there, you know. It's, there's a lot of um, a lot of things that are happening there. And now imagine the center of the Milky Way. You know, that you have, that's kind of the way to think about uh, Jupiter and Mola. You know, trying to understand what this what the center of your life has been, and trying to understand and uh, uh, shifting a perspective, kind of a framework. You know, so like even having a bigger picture view. And uh, it's a very important time because uh, you know Jupiter will be transiting also over Purvashada Nakshatra. Purvashada Nakshatra again, you know, the Nakshatra ruled by Venus. So right. you might find uh, at that point a lot of activities happening on the uh, on the financial front. You know, on the financial market, you people might be studying about how to run a business. You know, people might easily be reading a lot of papers, writing papers again. Now Purvashada is always in Nakshatra because. Uh, you know, uh, one of the symbols of Purvashada is actually an elephant. So you might find some some news about elephants coming becoming very important during that time. In general, you might see that it's done the news or something like that. Uh, one I, thing I'm... Uh, I know we don't want to talk about politics, but one thing I will say is that, like what you said before, look to the nakshatra to see which party is more in favor at the time, because the more horse... Um, nakshatras or even Sagittarius because there's only Ashwini and you know Sagittarius yep. Yep. Uh, Democrats are more in favor and when it's Uttara Ashada which is Ganesha or Purva Ashada associated with elephants yep. then it's the yep. Republic so just pay attention to when those nakshatras when especially even Jupiter and Saturn big big guys are in these nakshatras look how it plays yep. out in the parties and that's all I want to say about politics <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely, I, I don't. I do think that there will be um, the the parties or the company that are carrying elephants uh, and uh, you know elephant symbology as part of their logos or something like that. That will carry some of the Jupiter energy. Some of the Jupiter energy will definitely affect them. You know, for sure, no doubt about that. Uh, but you know, with uh, Jupiter in Purusha, it's a great time for lawyers. Though, you know, that's one thing. But so lawyers will definitely be. You know, very active. You know, they might find a lot of the now again. Uh, this would mean that there will be, if you have been thinking about filing a lawsuit, this would be the time when you might actually file a lawsuit. You know, and I'm pretty sure isn't uh, isn't uh, Jupiter going to be in Purva Ashada when Venus goes retrograde next May, possibly? Yeah, I think so. Already- I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, definitely when Venus becomes retrograde, the nakshatras come with Venus will become very, you know, yeah. very strong. Right. The influence will become very strong for sure. Uh, so definitely Jupiter, when it's in Purvashada, is going to add energy more. But one thing to say is that there will be a lot of interesting debates. that can, Purvashada is also the nakshatras. You'll see that this debating kind of, uh, nakshatra the of debates. Of debates. Oh, debates. Okay. So debates, uh, you'll see a lot of uh, very powerful debates going. You might be, ten, have this argumentative tendency yourself. You might find a lot of arguments happening within household, things like that. You know, that kind of tendency. Is, and it's, you can't re- really blame uh, the person. It's more like the influence of planet is actually making them argue. You know, things very strong. Shada, the, uh, one thing definitely that is great is that it's a great time period to, um, to strategize and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the one of the symbols of Purvashada is actually a winnowing, um, winnowing, you know. Now, what's interesting about this winnowing basket is that um, you actually try to separate the rus- rice and the husk using a winnowing basket. So, there is this back and forth moment going on, you know. So, for instance, on a Purvashada Nakshatra day, uh, I was trying to, uh, with a friend to, you know, and then we we first went to the railway station. There was no train. We went to the station. There was no bus. The, the guy said, my friend said, let's go back to the train station again. We went to the train station again, you know, and then turns out the train already left, you know, so we finally had to take a bus back to the... So there's a lot of back and forth. Kind of thing. So don't be, don't be uh, hesitant about going back and forth between ideas and books even or projects even. You know, and the, the back and forth is actually purifying a lot of karmas to be frank. So there's a reason why that's playing out. It's actually helping you out in the big picture. So we have framed that as well. Um, now, again, Jupiter being another, especially in Sagittarius path, is very interesting because uh, 
It's actually a Vargotama Pada of um, Trashada, you know, like Vargotama. So it's both in the Sagittarius as well as, uh, not just in the Rashi chart, as well as in the Navamsa chart as well. Now that is when you'll truly find very intense debates and all your um, religious ideologies coming to the fore, literally trying to declare war. You know, that's when you might potentially see war at some point. Trashada and Uttarashi. It's going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, to be frank, you know, I do think that Saturn in Purvashada, there has been uh, some reality, the war and some places for sure. But still, it you know, still tries to suppress suppresses that energy of war in Purvashada. When Jupiter gets into Purvashada, there can actually be, you know, some strong time of war because uh, it might actually expand war with what one of Jupiter is in. So it can be an intense debate. Yeah, no. Definitely, there will be, um, from a scientific point of view, for a play point of view, this is a great time. Because now, a new sh paradigm shift into almost all fields, in my opinion. I think, uh, you know, uh, definitely a lot of new ideas can come in. It's almost like a fresh new approach, a fresh way of looking at things can come in. You know, um, now, what's interesting with Uttarashada, though, again, Purvashada and Uttarashada is the actual writing of Chitra. Mula is like the research which you gather. Purvashada and Uttarashada is the writing that you actually do, you know. So that's very, it will be a very excellent time period for us. Now, Purvashada is also connected with waterfalls and rivers, you know, because the deity of uh, Purvashada, yes, Apas, yeah, the, the uh, water goddess, you know. And now I've seen that during, during this time, it's great to like, you'll find a lot of uh, new interesting cafes being opened up. We'll see Starbucks will definitely be in the news for sure. Um, what will be interesting is that um, uh, definitely, you know, uh, it's, I don't think it's an accident that you can, uh, I think it's a bubble tea, right? You get your, there are already those bubble tea kind of cafes which you can, you can get those Thai bubble tea stuff and then, you know, and actually Thailand is a land where you can actually connect with elephants, you know. So it's very interesting. Now, uh, with, uh, yeah, but, so Purvashala having this connection with water, uh, waterfalls and stuff like that, right? Water, water bodies. This is a great time period, uh, you know, for ocean resorts, any kind of resorts. Uh, you will find a lot of spas and stuff like that. Great time period for vacation even. You might go on a vacation and you will just read on the vacation in a spa by the ocean side. Would actually inspire you and you might actually find that kind of thing happening. I would even recommend, um, you know, definitely this will be a great time period for all the uh, massage industry as well. You know, all those massage parlors and massage spa and stuff like that. Because now is the time when that industry will kind of um, expand in a big way. And Jupiter is transiting over that. And um, with Uttarashada though, you can see some very strong uh, legal battles coming to the front. There might be legal battles coming to the front. A lot of companies might be going through big kind of restructuring. That kind of thing can actually during uh, Jupiter in Uttarashtada because that's also Uttarashtada is the nakshatra ruled by Sun as well. So you will find a lot of comes down upon the CEOs of leader um, many different country companies and stuff like that during that time. Now what is interesting with Uttarashtada is that uh, you know uh, Uttarashtada literally translates to uh, later victory and Purvashtada translates to before victory. So, Purvashtada and quality of actually stressing towards a bigger uh, target and stuff like that. Whereas Uttarish actually having the quality of like actually attaining the victory, you know, um, during this time frame. So, you might find a lot of people have been stuck for a really long time. So, really a lot of lawsuits will kind of get, you know, sorted out. Like in India, for instance, we had this great... Um, uh, a long lawsuit, uh, you know, there was this Ayodhya kind of issue, in which there was this disputed land connected with Lord Ram's temple and stuff like that, going far back as 20 years or something like that. And now that has finally been resolved when Jupiter was in Mula, you know. But you have to remember Saturn was in Purvashada during that time, Ketu was also in Purvashada, so the Purvashada Nakshatra themes also played out, you know. Now, uh, really, uh, so definitely this will be a time period when a lot of people will be reevaluating their own philosophies in life, they'll be opening themselves up to new streams of knowledge. And you'll see correspondingly, um, you know, there'll be a fundamental shift even for the educators themselves. You know, I think that uh, teacher and, uh, you know, educators, everyone in the counseling kind of profession, who is, whoever is playing the role of a guru, could be like us, could be counselors, could be like even physicians, doctors, 
everyone, all of those kind of categories is going to expand in a big way. We'll be actually having a, they'll actually be having some kind of relief finally <laughs> after Saturn's and Ketu's transit. You know. yeah. But uh, I do think the one big highlight of this particular transit is that there'll be eclipse. There is going to be an eclipse in Christmas time, you yeah. know, on the day after Christmas. Now that is going to be intense energy. You know, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of planets there. Now, the eclipse happening in Sagittarius is the actual uh, energy uh, of like the Sagittarius expanding into your life. Now, this is a great time period for making breakthroughs in general. So, say whatever Sagittarius is um, ruling in your chart, you'll find that those particular areas you can actually make a big breakthrough. So, perhaps you have been thinking about pursuing a master's for some time. Now is the time around the eclipse time is when you'll find uh, breakthrough, you making a final decision, okay, fine. I'll go for masters and things like that. Many people will be traveling to foreign lands during this time. Many people will actually be taking up, uh, you know, uh, long-term financial futures in a big way. They might actually be studying about financial investments right now. Now, on a mundane level, I would even say that a lot of uh, banking and, uh, you know, financial institutions are going to face a tough time during this time frame, around this eclipse time. If uh, I would say it's, it's more like they have already. Yeah, especially for the United States because we have Sagittarius Ascendant. According yeah. to Jake Kelleher, yeah. he's the uh, historian who actually went into the archives in Philadelphia, Philadelphia, looked up the actual time that they signed the document, and it was at 6.30 that day on July 4th, 1776. Now, a lot of people say, well, but all of the states didn't sign by then. Well, some of them signed later, but that's okay. Baby was still born, you know, baby was premature, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. baby was still born. So we use that date and it works great. And so having these seven planets in the United States first chart, I mean, first house, you know, that's, it's going to be really intense for us. But, you know, anytime Jupiter's on the ascendant, you've got help, right? Yep. Yep. There's definitely help for sure. Uh, there's no doubt about that, uh, you know, uh, because the eclipse is definitely going to shift a lot of thinking for the in the U.S. for sure. There is no doubt about that. I think uh, especially there's been a lot of. Said, I think the education system needs to be overhauled. It is just, it's a hot mess, you know. And these poor parents who paid this guy all this money to get, you know, I mean, some of them they they, they knew they were doing something wrong, but just the fact. But they have to do that to get their kids into school. It tells you how screwed up it is, you know? Yeah, de definitely. Uh, I think the student loan kind of uh, theme, the issue of that will kind of come to the front and that will be a big thing, you know? I think uh, that is a big part of the conversation coming uh, year for sure And Jupiter is in Sagittarius. Now, uh, I would say that with uh, Jupiter in Sagittarius, uh, you know, the, I, I do think that a lot of, uh, you might find, non-traditional kind of education systems coming up more, you know, uh, the perhaps more people are just like deciding to, you know, you know homeschool their children and stuff like that. They don't learn the traditional way, you know, we have a lot of, you know, what is it? One out, I don't know what the numbers are, but a lot of autistic kids today, yeah. you know, and they're not going to fit into the system we have built, but it needs to be overhauled. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, when Jupiter is in Mola, all this will be a big thing. Now, once the eclipse energy, now, now we have to remember when it's kind of important not to begin any important thing when the eclipse is energies are very strong. So, for instance, what happens then is that say you begin, uh, you actually decide to make a, a foreign trip during the eclipse time, right? What can happen is that when the eclipse is happening, the foreign trip might come up, but when the eclipse is ending, which will happen around uh, very 13th or so, 11th, 12th or something like that, the lunar right. eclipse. The, when the eclipse energies are ending, we'll see that same event is actually ending by that time as well. If you got a job offer around the eclipse time, that same job offer might be withdrawn, like when the eclipse energy is, end, is ending. You know, So you say you begin a relationship during eclipse time, the same relationship might end during the uh, eclipse energy is coming down. You know, So it's very important during this time frame to become mindful of the eclipse energies. Now, eclipse energy is great uh, to understand the darkness, to confirm the darkness is there, whereas Sagittarius is there. You know, it's very 
uh, important, uh, you know, uh, to see, okay, this is what. Brought up, you know, Pluto and wherever he sits, he, he identifies with the fear in us, you know. And it's right, scary. yeah, I think. Uh, no? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Katya, why don't you uh, why don't you share more on the eclipse? I think you mentioned to me that this was going to be the eclipse of the century or something like that. Right? Yeah, you know, Joni, Katri, Mama Joni, um, she's been talking about this for the past uh, over a year. Uh, seven planets in Sagittarius, you know, that's um, it's intense, and um, and just and also, you know, we have to remember that when Jupiter and Saturn come together, it's a point of manifestation. You know, because Jupiter wants to expand everything, Saturn wants to contract everything. So when they come together, you know, something's got to give, right? Um, and it's so it's growth. We have, we will grow at this time. And um, oh gosh, Edith Hathaway's uh, presentation at the Future of Astrology Conference was so wonderful. I can't begin to just rehash everything she said, but I will. Uh, I do want to, um, you know, say that one thing I really took away from her presentation is to look at when Saturn and Jupiter were together in the fire signs, you know, mm -hmm. so it's together. Yeah, it's in Sag. I think last time it was, um, Aries. Was it? No, yep. it was Leo. No, it yep. was Aries. It was, yep. In 1990 like, or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, um, oh, and one of them, uh, when it was in, uh, Leo was in the 1920s. And that was right yeah. after, you know, World War One, yeah. and we were changing. Society was changing, you know, yeah. um, especially um, as they moved into Virgo. You could see a lot of change with women. But it just, it's, you know, think about, uh, for instance, like Coco Chanel. She, she was a, a part of that Jupiter-Saturn in Leo in the 20s. And she put pants mm -hmm. on women, you know, like that was yeah. revolutionary. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. a game. Danger. She changed women's clothing forever. And that's exact. So this time since Sagittarius, what is Sagittarius? It's religion, our beliefs. And if you, you know, if you're an atheist, you definitely believe in atheism, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you believe yeah. in something, right? Um, yeah. All of that is changing. And like you said, especially with education, um, I think that especially here in the United States, like I said, this is all in our first house. Uh, so it's ourself. We're changing, and it's going to activate. You know, one five nine. You know, education, health, the uh, fifth house, right? Yeah. Learning, right. actual learning, and then the ninth yep. house of higher education. You know, all of those houses are going to be activated. Um, right. Eclipse. But you know, it's yeah, definitely. Yeah. We have to remember though that we have Mars. What well, places? Yeah. Are enemy at our back yeah, right yeah. And he goes into scorpio the day before his own sign so i mean that's yeah. why it was like wow this doesn't look very good for um violence and anger and terrorism you know especially for the united yeah. states you know it, mars is going to be in our 12th house literally foreign land yeah. so that's yeah. why i'm telling everybody like if you're going to travel for the holidays try to travel before the 20s like well before the 25th you know, like yep. at least a, a, if you can make it a week or so and then a week after, because on the 26th, when this happens, I can just imagine if you're flying or doing any kind of travel, it, it could be dangerous. Um, yeah, it could be. Well, yeah, I do think that uh, that can be too, um, too much, too powerful of a thing going on. You know, I do think uh, with Mars being in 12,000 Scorpio, so there might be a lot of unexpected events happening. You know, it could be like some kind of thing breaking down. Maybe a car breaks down in the way, or something like that, you know. Well, the revolution's happening. I mean, Lebanon is in a revolution. And it's on fire, literally, like California. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Poor Lebanon. I'm just praying for them. They're having a hard time. But they've got to get through this. And that's the perfect example of this. I actually looked up their chart. I forget what their ascendant was. But it, I was like, oh, yeah. They're, they've got to sink or swim, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what it comes down to. You either ride the wave or you drown. And um, yeah. so, yeah, that's, that's, uh, and then also, you know, we got to remember, it's not just the 26th, two weeks later, we have another one in January, lunar eclipse. Yeah. yeah. And then in February, yeah. Mars is going to be, 
I forget, it, something to do with Mars is going to be at the point where he was at the eclipse last year, or at, he's at the eclipse point from last year, mm -hmm. and is yeah. for some more. Um, yeah, yeah. And, the last time, last time when Rahu was in, there was the uh, the big tsunami that happened. Uh, you know, uh, so this time something was actually possible. Uh, you know. Um, Though, though, though it's a great time period for vacation and resort and all that, I would, as you mentioned, it will be a period to do once the eclipse energy is a calm down, in my opinion, you know. Uh, it, sure, you... Yeah, March yeah. 8th is in Damula. And so that's yep. going to... Yep. Um, that's yep. actually going to be a position where it was at, during 9-11. So... Yeah, that's... Yeah, it's not, uh, that definitely looks challenging for sure. Definitely what I think can happen is, uh, you know, uh, Mars being in Ketu, like, um, you know, there's a, there's a good chance that buildings with radiation, they will just break right now immediately. You know, there are some faulty buildings. There were some cases in India in which some buildings just fell down, you know, without anything. A lot of other foundations will also be um, going through a, a check. You know, now found, the phone the foundations in our life is also being tested by Mars. Usually mm -hmm. I would say it's being in Ketu, this is a great time period. Uh, this will be a great time for, uh, you know, uh, finding your independence in foreign land. But, but it might come through a lot of serious challenges, you know, like find yourself alone, you might have find yourself fighting, and then that's how you kind of gain your independence. You know, that kind of thing can actually happen. But I do think that there might be a big uh, theme of immigration kind of reform or something along those lines. There might be a big change or shift in those kind of immigration kind of themes, you know. Um, themes of immigration, foreign travel. So there might be some uh, new shifts coming, uh, new ways of looking at things, that kind of thing is actually possible. Perhaps new new policies might also come into place, which is actually shifting a lot of things as well. You see, again, when Saturn was transiting, uh, through the 9th house of Sagittarius, a lot of immigrants came to the news. You know, there was a lot of questions, a lot of debate around how to deal with immigrants, how to deal with children of immigrants, all that kind of thing, right? So again, I think Jupiter is just going to add more fuel to it. And finally, there will be some kind of result on all those debates. It's a kind of delay. Jupiter is going to ensure that it's going to some, some kind of risk come into play, you know, during that time. Now, uh, if Eclipse for sure is, uh, you know, it will be transformative for U U.S. for sure. I think uh, as a country, there might be, a, the country might have to do a big rechecking with regard to the lot of philosophies. I would say probably the financial institutions might uh, have some kind of challenges. They might go to stress test or something like that. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Facebook has their own. They're coming up with called Libra. Yeah. Yeah, cryptocurrency, yeah, for sure. Jupiter in Mola is a great time period to study about cryptocurrency, look into cryptocurrency. I have a lot of friends getting into cryptocurrency right now. Yeah. So Jupiter shifted into Mola, yeah. they started looking into cryptocurrency, you know, for sure. I think it will become stronger when Jupiter is also retrograde as well. You know, I had, a, I was talking to this uh, astrologer friend of mine who also mentioned when planets, uh, people who have Jupiter retrograde in the chart, they kind of think different way of money. So the Jupiter grade is like uh, kind of making them open to more kinds of alternative kind of ways like cryptocurrencies and things like that more as well, you know. But I, I would say this is a great time period for any kind of financial planning in general. You know, if you are planning to invest, if you're planning to buy a property, real estate, finally planning to buy even like, you know, second country home or whatever, you know, all that kind of thing. This is a great time period for sure in terms of talking to a counselor and making a plan, making a solid plan, things like that, you know. Usually, I would say people who have no crucial planning, this is a time period to actually related in finance in general. You know, there are a lot of uh, youngsters who could use financial planning in general, you know. That's something I would definitely recommend. And though, so what, what's great about um, Jupiter being in Sagittarius is, uh, you know, it's a, a one thing you have to remember is that, you know, Jupiter is also kind of fat in the body. You know, you might actually begin to eat more fatty food. You have to watch out for that. That's something that can happen. And you might have to, uh, you know, uh, usually it is a great time period to connect with the teachers. Especially when Mars enters into Sagittarius, joining Jupiter, studying yoga, doing any kind of physical training, all that kind of thing is very good. Even studying dancing, literally, any kind of physical movement, which is Mars and Jupiter, it's a great time period for that. 
I would say that. And you'll find a lot of interest in um, these kind of um, yogic schools or yogic teaching trainings and stuff like that. You know, that kind of thing you'll see just a lot more thing happening. Um, yeah. But I think it will be very to see when, uh, you know, Saturn leaves uh, Sagittarius. Then Jupiter will be literally free in Ketu. And then you might find a lot of um, a lot of deep deep spiritual insights coming to the front. A very very powerful spiritual knowledge will come right now to many people. You know, there'll be a lot of gurus from the past lives coming to the front. I would think a lot of great spiritual knowledge will be coming to the front. You know. You want to go through the twelve signs briefly and say how yeah, sure. to take into consideration Ashtaka Varga. So you have yeah. to look at the Ashtaka Varga score to see how Jupiter um, will perform for you this next year. But in general, you can kind of say, you know, if he's in this house, then these certain things will be activated. So what do you right. think? So I'll go, yeah, I'll go briefly over them. So like for Aries um, sign, Jupiter will be in the ninth house, you know. So this is a time period where Aries ascendant will actually be considering about foreign travel, higher education. Uh, they might be deeply with their spiritual gurus, you know, go for pilgrimages, things like that, you know, definitely. They might have issues with the roles of coming up right now. Father or father father figures actually coming up right now and they might have to deal with those kind of themes as well right now. You know, um, or the fatherhood, the principle of fatherhood, the whole patriarchy, that kind of thing, you know, that kind of thing will actually come to the front right now. But for Taurus Ascendant, Jup this uh, Jupiter transit is going to be in the 8th house. This is a time period when a lot of attention is being put on your finances, especially joint finances. You know, usually I would say this is a time humans can break out between you know married couples or whatever about joint finances. So they are short for that. Yeah, you know, the, together in the eighth house, you could get divorced. Yeah, well, I, it, it's possible that uh, yeah, well, around the eclipse time, the arguments can kind of get out of hand. So it's kind of important to calm yourself down. You know, use yeah, you know. I wouldn't say uh, definitely Jupiter and Ketu, the eclipse is very intense this time for Taurus Ascendant happening in their eighth house, you know, eighth house of sudden events. So, usually uh, there is this theme of like uh, the insurance. Now, this is a great time period to study occult, you know, if you want to study astrology, great time period. If you want to study any kind of spiritual tradition, great time period, you know. Now, um, for Gemini Ascendance, uh, Sagittarius Transit is uh, going to happen in the 7,000 relationships. So, this will be a time when finally many natives might feel like uh, socializing. They might uh, feel like a breakthrough in their relationship area of their life. They might finally feel a lot of uh, fitness to even like traveling on lands and then activating the relationships as well, you know. Perhaps these, this is when Gemini Ascendants might actually become intelligent about their relationships as well. They might find a read a book about relationships, they might read a book about opening up business, that things is possible right now, you know. Uh, one, one thing about Gemini Ascendants also, because um, Gemini is actually carrying a nakshatra of Panuvasa, you know. Uh, so you'll find that when Jupiter is in Sagittarius, uh, Gemini Ascendant will some natives might actually feel like a big start kind of thing playing out in their life. They might feel like they need to restart a lot of things in their life, you know. And that's real. Perhaps uh, some things in life you don't succeed at the first attempt. You might have to succeed in the second attempt, you know. That's one thing I would say. For cancer ascendant, it's happening. Uh, this transit is happening in the sixth house of routines, uh, loans. Sixth house also of, uh, you know, um, um, enemies, competition, sixth house also of like, you know, uh, though it's very, it's very easy for cancer ascendant to, you know, get caught up in this whole enemy thing. Because remember, cancer is a sign where Jupiter actually gets exalted. Now, begin to find that they'll begin to become very spiritual uh, about the way they're dealing with competition in general. They'll begin to be, they'll become very, um, uh, they'll begin to uproot people out of their life that's not serving them all. All that kind of thing with cancerous and can become very strong. Uproot people can also symbolize uprooting philosophies, working the ancestral trauma, you know, getting rid of that, cleansing all that ancestral it karma. Too, you know, because Saturn's there. And because I have this, and I've yep. noticed that having Saturn and K2 in my sixth house, you know, I ended one career and started another. So, I mean, that's and with Jupiter. I'm, now I'm like, oh, thank God he's there. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the house of health too, right? So I mean, my yeah. health is very challenging. I've been sick all year, 
you know, right. and I'm just now starting to feel like I'm getting better. And that's, and you know, I, we also have to remember, this is something that I, you know, until you're in on the day that things happen, it's hard to kind of see, but um, you know, when Jupiter went into Sagittarius, Mercury was still retrograde. And yep. I feel like it kind of held back some of yep. his benefits. Um, and so now that Mercury's direct, I'm feeling like, okay, now Jupiter can function more, you know, properly. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, many cancer students will begin to have a spiritual routines right now, a very strong spiritual routine. They might have a routine with current. Yeah. And mantras are yeah. for health every day, because look, you can't possibly, you know, I listen to a lot of them on YouTube, but you can't possibly listen or do mantras and be depressed. You just can't be. They don't exist. Yep, exactly. Be, you know, and as yep. soon as you start that music, ah, oh, yep. you know? Definitely. Well, one simplest, simplest thing I can say for a cancerous and uh, this for any cancerous and also, is to actually have a routine where you are going to some spiritual place of worship either on a Thursday. This is thing. What can happen then is that getting the sixth house Jupiter right now. This will be this will be great. If you make sure you have a Thursday spiritual as long as Jupiter is in Sagittarius, right? For a cancer assignment. That's very great for them. Jupiter, so make Thursdays into spiritual day, books about spirituality, be open about spirituality, things like that. Be open to new knowledge, things like that, you know. Now for Leo Snin, uh, this Jupiter transfer is happening in the fifth house of children. So definitely a lot of Leo Snin natives will become parents. They'll begin to think about children. They'll begin to plan about children. The children's education is a big theme right now. A lot of creativity will also be inspired within the Leo Ascendant right now. And they'll begin to a lot. They'll begin to work with their ancestral trauma a lot. All that kind of thing might come through a creative kind of uh, outlet. You know, that can be very strong. Even natives might suddenly feel inspired, uh, you know, um, to study about stock market investing, you know, study about... Uh, will be more willing to take more romantic uh, challenges, things like that. Yeah, that kind of thing is actually possible right now because Jupiter is also transferring the fifth house of romance as well. Now, for Leo Sinan, one important thing is, you know, uh, it's very important uh, for a Leo Sinan to become, uh, uh, you know, um, not, to, not to be blind uh, out of their own ego. Because what is interesting with Uttarashada is that Uttarashada is an unruled nakshatra. It's, it's an actual nakshatra where Jupiter gets debilitated in the Capricorn side. So it's very important for a Leo Sinan native, at least during this time period, to study more about themselves and to even uh, know to puff up their ego, you know, to understand their uh, side of their ego. What is, what is really unique about them? Not to happen, not to be so unique to the point where you're cursing someone else or trying to bring down someone else, you know, that kind of thing. So it's kind of like accepting everyone else's yeah, definitely. But at least for it's a good time period for Leo Sinan in general because Jupiter is transferring to fifth house of Pura Punya, so you might actually get a lot of merits during this time, you know. Of course, depending upon the Ashtagalga score and all that. But this is a great time period in general for Leo Sinan. Now, uh, you have uh, for Sinan, Jupiter is actually transferring to fifth house. So this is a great time period to, uh, you know, bring about homes, residence, expanding to a new home, bringing a new home buying new land property, changing your vehicle, cars, all that kind of thing, this time frame. This is also a great time period to connect with your mother and uh, to literally uh, heal all those mother issues that we have, we all have, you know. So Jupiter runs through 4,000 is kind of a great time period to connect more with the mother goddess energy as well. You know, uh, you might find a lot of people suddenly decorating this as a spiritual kind of thing, personal. With Jupiter is transferring to the fourth house. They might bring in more books. You might um, suddenly shift a home so that they can study more, things like that. All that kind of thing can actually happen more for a Virgo. You know? Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, one one thing I should definitely say is that uh, suddenly Saturn transit with Ketu for a Virgo has been challenging, you know, because they have been testing. The comfort zones have been tested for a long uh, for a long time right now. Probably for the past. now, Jupiter transit of fourth house is actually going to make them more intelligent about how they are handling, how they have been handling all the limitations and all the challenges. And that, that wisdom from those past experiences will come to the front, right? That is a way I would frame that. You know? 
Now for Libra Ascendant, uh, Jupiter is actually in the third house, right? So that's actually going to expand their creativity. A lot of hobbies will come forth. A lot of people will be doing a lot of short distance travel to foreign countries almost on a frequent basis. You know, a lot of hobbies, a lot of us. A lot of expansion, writing, you know, suddenly you find yourself reading books that hobbies and things like that. I would even say a lot of communication kind of things can happen. Now, it's very important for a, a Libra student again because it's carrying a Jupiter rule nakshatra to uh, become kind of like come, come down when a lot of arguments break down on the communication front, you know, especially with your friends and things like that. You know, Vishaka is also very intense kind of nakshatra carrying this Indragni kind of energy there, you know, and Jupiter is actually in a fire sign right now. You know, it's a lot of fiery kind of communication is on a very strong possibility for a Vishaga native right now. But at the same, this will be a great time period to uh, communicate uh, their long-term plans with their, uh, you know, uh, with their loved ones and stuff like that. That kind of thing is very strong. Now for a Scorpius man, uh, Jupiter transit through the second house of Sagittarius is actually good for money. Suddenly out of nowhere, new money is coming in. I would say new financial investments might be coming your way. I would even say that uh, you might actually be making money from foreign lands or through spiritual means or through counseling. You know? So there's a right. chance that you actually, yeah, for sure, you know, you might just find a new job. Scorpio ascendant and he just got a foreign investor. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jupiter. Yeah, there you go. You know? Exactly, there you go. You know, exactly that. You know, actually making foreign. In and now remember, it's with Ketu. So there's a good chance that there was a past life connection playing out on that front. You know, right. there was some kind of healing that happened on the ancestral um, DNA front, which was actually bringing those bl blessings of those foreign investing energy. You know, definitely, there's definitely no doubt about that. Now during, uh, but for Scorpio in general, you'll find that uh, they'll begin to become very preachy during this time. Now, Scorpio is the, the group of people who really need to watch out for their, uh, you know, um, the religious kind of fundamentals kind of values during this time frame. Victor is actually, con the eclipse is happening in the second hour of values right now. Perhaps you might find that, uh, you know, the sudden combative kind of nature of Scorpius is coming to the front right now. That's an actual thing for Scorpius to watch out because Mars will be on Scorpio when the eclipse is happening. You know, it's an important thing also for a Scorpius. Now, now Sagittarius is where, for Sagittarius and SMM natives, all the action is happening for them. They are feeling like their life has been completely uprooted, right? They are feeling, now finally, they feel that, that big blessing coming there. They feel a big break for them. You know, now they're like, okay, fine. Now what I've been planning and strategizing, all that is making sense. I mean, if you have your moon in Sag, you've been in, in uh, Sadi Sati. Because you know, you guys, you yeah. can listen to this reading from your Lagna, your Ascendant, or you can read it from your moon. And I find the moon, you right. have to do both, really. I find, I, 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 I miss so much if you don't use your Chandra Lagna, you know. Well, um, yeah, you know, to be frank, uh, Katya, oh, you know, I, hard. Yeah, I would still say that, you know, if you uh, you can actually make use of all the signs and apply that in your chart. Because remember, each sign is playing uh, different house roles. And you will see, so you, Libra might be 7,000 in your chart or Libra might be 5,000 in your chart. But from Libra chart ascendant, with 5,000 areas of your life, you might find third house activity is being expanded. So it might be like your uh, romantic interests, your passions, your creativity, suddenly linked to go for more of, uh, you know, more hobbies and communication with regard to your creativity kind of thing, you know. So it's, it's, it's like uh, definitely value in understanding uh, all the ascendants, you know. That's the next level though, but that's uh, definitely as you mentioned, uh, you know, ascendant, moon, sun even, you know, that's a very standard kind of way of looking at that. Right. Uh, I, but I, uh, again. From my sun chart, I mean, I get a little bit, you know, but um, and I know, you know, really you should look at all three. Um, but yeah. I, you know, the, the moon chart, it just shows the shadow side that you are not seeing in the Rashi. Yeah, know? for sure. Definitely. In fact, you can read a whole chart from the moon chart and not even look at the, at the Rashi and be completely accurate, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, definitely. I would say when, uh, what's interesting about, um, about that, you know, sun chart could just mean that, uh, you know, your father or 30 figures in your life experiencing all this stuff you know mar if you make mars as the lagna this uh, transit you might find your siblings uh, or your friends are actually experiencing this effect you know and that's the other way to look at the chart you can make jupiter with lagna read this transit and suddenly your spouse is actually 
experiencing these effects as well. You know, so that's the other way to, that's the other layer to these transits, you know, which is actually hidden in plain sight, but we kind of uh, forget about it, you know, that's something right. I would say. But uh, coming back to Sagittarius, what are, uh, Sagittarius and natives will finally feel a break, a big shift coming during this time frame. They'll finally feel a big shift. Even though our eclipse happens on the Ascendant at that particular year, a big transformation energy is coming into your life. Perhaps it will be a decision which you make. You might change your job, you know, you might even change, uh, you know, your place of residence or your entire life is going to be completely experience a big shift, all that kind of thing. Usually Jupiter transit over Ascendant is great for relationships though, in general, um, because that can expand. This aspect in the seventh house, like bringing in new relationships for Sagittarius Ascendant. Uh, so Capricorn native, it's happening in the twelfth house uh, of uh, chart of their of their charts. So twelfth house is the house of letting go. Now Capricorn as the natives have really been going through a very hard time because they, you have Saturn K2 in the twelfth house. They had an eclipse last year on on their ascendant. So there's a lot of transmission already happening with Capricorn as the natives. And then uh, one important thing though is that right now Jupiter in twelfth house is an excellent time period to kind of like retreat and recoup and kind of like have a, have a long uh, what their past 11 years are. You know, this is a great time period to reflect on that. And then, definitely 12,000 the houses, 12,000 also a house of foreign travel. So they might definitely be traveling to foreign lands. Now, it's very really interesting that they, this Capricorn natives might be traveling to ashrams, retreats, meditation retreats, and all that kind of thing. They, these natives really might be going for a, uh, they, they will really be going for a break. <laughs> for right. sure. And meeting their guru in foreign lands. For sure, definitely. Exactly. There you go. That's a good one. Now, uh, for Aquarius Ascendant natives, Jupiter is transiting through the 11,000 gains. Now, this is a time period when they might actually be part of very powerful social clubs. They might be networking with a very powerful group. Suddenly, their network circle has been expanded suddenly, unexpectedly, through, their, through the means of their teachers, even. You could even say that, uh, you know, other than uh, this is a time period, uh, most of the Aquarius natives would be attending some kind of conferences for sure. You know, you, they would be open to those kind of conferences. They would be, uh, now one definite suggestion I have for Aquarius assistant natives uh, to attend classes in a group session, in a group way. So rather than going for an individual sessions, if you, are, if you want to study something, if you for yoga, for instance, attend a group class on yoga instead of studying weekly from YouTube or something like that. That kind of thing is something I can highly, highly recommend right now. Um, so that's one thing. For Aquarius Ascendant, it's a great time period. A lot of wealth is going to come. This is a temporary Dhane Yoga. You know, second Lord is in the 11th house right now by transit. So you can make a lot of money, right? So a lot of gains can come, promotions come, all that good stuff. You know. This is a very good time period right now. Now, finally, for Pisces Ascendant Native, Jupiter is transiting through their 10th house of career. Now, Pisces Ascendant Native, finally, will begin to feel some kind of stability of them. Saturn has been literally destroying Pisces Ascendant natives over the past two years. So Saturn being the 12th law, transiting through the 10th house, that's been a very extreme time period for them, extremely karmic time period for them, where they feel extremely isolated, uh, extremely frustrated, all that Saturn and kind of delay, kind of delay obstacles. Kind of thing. Now, Jupiter, when transiting through Pisces, is actually going to expand a lot of good things for them. Finally, they feel hopeful, finally, they feel optimistic, finally, there's, there's a ray of light uh, that is actually activating gains and stuff like that, you know, a lot of financial blessings can come. Usually even, I would even say a lot of uh, things on the career front will just work itself out on many fronts. Uh, I would even say a lot of uh, loans might get repaid. There might be help coming your way as well. Help in the form of family, help in the form of uh, good friends, spiritual friends, help to teachers, help support from counselors or support of figures, you know. Yeah, meeting All new that. people in the career. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Meeting new people through career. Yeah, this is my you husband. Know, he just uh, went to Amsterdam for a physics conference and met yeah. all these gurus of his career. You know, like as soon as yeah. Jupiter went into his 10th house, it was like. Yeah, so. definitely. Definitely, you can see that, you know, and traveling to foreign lands. This is, this is a time when the foreign land images might actually be fruitful in it is. You might, you know, finally there is new ideas coming your way, new ways of thinking, ways of looking. Uh, now, this is something I even encourage, try to read a book from foreign land even. That's also something I can encourage. Read philosophy. Say, say you are just digging, you are just hearing a Vedic astrology session for the first time. Try 
look more into deeper into the vedas and stuff like that you know take take your time read the epics read the mahabharata stuff like that you know that kind of thing is very good now again uh, pisces as a native will be having a great time period because uh, they'll be getting some very powerful uh, intuitive messages right now because ketu is with jupiter so almost like out of nowhere this kind of so more like they're speaking to their guides all the time you know literally right now when jupiter is in sagittarius you know? so that's actually great um, great thing for this in the natives you know um, yeah so that's what i have for <laughs> jupiter in uh, sagittarius uh, katya uh, any questions or anything like that? anything you would like to add on to what i, I said i mean jupiter rules pisces so especially also for them I and mean, we we keep focusing oh sagittarius sagittarius well in vedic you know Jupiter yeah. also rules Pisces so i think they also are going to feel a lot of relief in their career at this time you know having saturn and and k2 there just pulling everything apart you know making making us get down to what what's really uh, important you know yeah um, for sure definitely i think um, pisces men will finally be making a big decision uh, you know they have been struggling with their career for for a long time suddenly now a lot of things are just is going to slip up that is the way out frame you know i think this is a good time period in general uh, for pis and this they should be making they should not be all oh, things are working out i should just relax they should actually making news and working working hard you know so that's what will actually help them out so to make right. time period to actually implement your plans to bring out a good strategy you know make a big plan things like that you know that kind of thing will be very very good right now especially for pisces uh, sun natives along with sagittarius for sure yeah Okay, well, okay. thank you so much for that. That uh, definitely will help a lot of people. Um, this is getting a little long, but do you want to go over the superimposed chart? Maybe we can just talk about how transit Jupiter, um, you know, how it works with the Navamsha and the Rashi chart superimposed and just, you know, right. just uh, so yeah, I'll just maybe I'll I'll just talk about it briefly. Um, you know, 